the dog dropped a pool toy and now he won't stop barking. Kenobi, you can't get it unless you can dive. You won't be able to get it. Barking at it's not gonna make a difference either. Oh, he tried to go under, that's cute. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer. And this is Kenobi on the corner. You see his little ears pop in. I have been very excited to share this episode with you because I have a very big announcement. One of many in the next little while, so stay tuned. But this is going to be the first. So over the course of the last few months, I have been working with a wonderful team at a company called Outloud Merch to create a custom DIY clothing line that is made for people like you and me who love to DIY and love to get creative and messy. This is for you and I am so excited to talk about it. I am also wearing one of the pieces right now. No, the shirts do not come tie dyed. You make it your own. This is a result of uh, a lot of colors being thrown at me. Um, <laughs> but the point is you buy it white or black. I went with basic colors as the base because the whole point is for you to make it your own. I DIY a lot and my clothing was starting to reveal that. I don't think there was one item of clothing that I actually owned that didn't have paint on it or sawdust on it or dirt on it. I didn't own anything nice anymore. All I wanted was dedicated clothing that I could wear to get messy and I didn't have to feel bad about it. And that also wasn't like an old crappy t-shirt. You know those t-shirts that you don't wear out because you're like, it's a painting shirt. No, no, no more ugly t-shirts while you're getting creative. But then I thought, what if I wore clothing that encourages you to get it messy? Make it unique, make it feel like its own DIY project every time I was DIYing. Thus, this DIY personalized clothing line was born. Made by a DIYer for a DIYer. We made t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, tanks, snapbacks, beanies, sweatshirts, aprons, DIY zip bags, mugs, ideation notebooks, and each one of these items all have make it messy or DIY in progress on it. So the next time that you're painting your house or you're painting a picture and your hands get dirty, just go like this and call it adding to your own personal DIY creation. Get it messy and make creativity fun to wear again. And if you ain't into DIY clothing, we also made a special crew neck sweater using a personal illustration of mine that one could say is out of this world. <laughs> Not only is this line great for you guys, but it could be great for a friend or a family member who also loves to DIY. They make great gifts and it helps me keep on DIYing for you guys. May this clothing line be the reason why you try a new DIY project for the first time. Or maybe it's your reminder and your cape of encouragement when you're stepping outside your comfort zone to up your game or try something new. But ultimately, may it be the reason why you get a little bit more messy because in my books, creativity is just not meant to be inside the lines. You can visit my website or I have linked you directly to the product page below in my description box. Go check it out and see if there is something there for you so you can keep on DIYing and looking good at the same time. May we all DIY in nicer looking clothing. <laughs> Okay, on to this amazing, fun outdoor episode. This is part two of my backyard kind of transformation. If you haven't seen part one, I use some Pinterest inspired projects to create and transform my entire pool area. I will link it up above, above above? I always get this wrong. But on this episode, I am going completely original and I am focusing on my dining area. So maybe this one isn't really like a backyard makeover, but more like a DIY backyard dinner party hosting makeover inspiration transformation episode. Yeah? We'll work on that. So I was hosting a family dinner party and it was my goal to make it extra unique and extra special with the use of a DIY. So I'm going to be creating a really cool custom centerpiece for the table. But before we get into what that DIY is going to be, first let's see the space. This is the area. I love this table and we've gotten a lot of use out of it. It looks like wood, but it's actually made of like a tin. I even like the seat 
seats, how they're rounded, because when you sit in them, it feels like it's hugging you. You can sit in these seats for hours and you feel comfortable. This table was from the Hampton Bay collection at the Home Depot that I put into this space at the beginning of the summer. I was looking for a quality table that would last and this table has certainly proved it could do that. The one thing I do love about this table the most is the little thing that you actually never think about when buying a table and that's this little bar on the bottom. Now I figured the bar was put there so it can hold the umbrella, but I love it because you can put your feet up on it. It's such a little tiny design element that just adds so much more comfort to the space. Okay, so what are we DIYing? I have decided it was going to be Italian night, so pasta is gonna get made, but what I thought would be really cool is to create a centerpiece that kind of allowed you to pick your own fresh greens to put on the pasta or to put in your drink. It looks a little something like this. So it's a centerpiece that has six holes on the top and out of the holes are going to have fresh herbs. Mm. Now underneath I have a ribbed stand. This is going to be made out of dowels. So it's kind of cool, kind of trendy. And then this is going to be all curved as well, the little lid. And then inside are little planters and each planter will have a different herb in them. I'm thinking of doing some basil, some salami, cilantro and some mint. The idea is that I'll do two of each so that each couple can have their own version of it just to keep things COVID safe. So I'm giving them their own plan. That's the plan. Plan. Plan? That's the plan. <laughs> I literally just said that's the plan. Oh dear. So I was off to the hardware store in search of my dowels. There were lots of different sizes to play with, but ultimately I went with the three quarter inch as I felt it would serve the creative vision best. And after a quick trip, I had my dowels. I also bought some wood fill. Then I was off to source my herbs. Look how beautiful this little scene looks. I even managed to get a beautiful bouquet of flowers for the table. When I got back, it was finally time to start my DIY herb box. To build this space, I was using a one by five lumber and six planters as my sizing guide. And then of course I needed to cut my two side pieces, which I'm measuring those two five and three quarters each. To attach my two side pieces to the bottom, I'm pre-drilling and screwing with a one and a half inch screw. The next step was to measure out my half inch wood pieces to make sure that they fit snug on the inside. And using a brad nailer and a one inch brad nail, I simply secured them to place. You know what? I actually just cut this tiny little piece that I'm gonna put in the middle and then secure it together with a brad nail. This is just gonna give me a little extra security. It's all we needed. Now we just have to keep cutting some dowel. Measure and cut. Using my chop saw, I cut my first dowel down to six inch pieces. So after hand sanding about five of them, I was hit with a brilliant idea to help make my process go a lot faster. <laughs> go brains. All right, let's attach these. Just to make sure that my plan was in fact going to work, I ended up securing the first nine dowels using my one inch brad nails. Yay, cool. And I gotta say, it was working. All I had left to do was to cut all the rest of my dowels and put them into place. To make this entire experience go faster, I actually ended up setting up a jig with a piece of wood and my clamps. This makes it a lot easier to cut multiple things at once. No, my friends, this edit is not sped up. That is just how fast I am actually moving and cutting these things. All I had left to do was to put them into place. I would also just like to note that this brad nailer is not light. I am clearly super strong. <laughs> super strong. There she is. Now, I'm gonna take some wood filler, fill in all of these little holes. Then we're gonna sand the top down to make sure it's nice and flush. and then we'll work on the lid. I have this piece here. This is a half inch ply. This is going to be the roof to my 
or bucks. I'm simply hand drawing my curved ends out using a two inch measurement from the center as my guide. Keep in mind, I'm literally just eyeballing this one because I don't mind it to be a little imperfect. Then of course you just cut it out using a jigsaw. Once my top was ready, it was time to cut my circles. And to do that, I was using a three inch hole saw. So what I had to do was figure out where I wanted each hole to go, measure my halfway point, and then I actually used my hole saw to create the circles as my guide. So the last step to creating my top, once I had all of my holes mapped out, was to cut it out using my drill. Now, the trick to creating a clean hole using a hole saw is that you want to create a hole through the board, but just as you see the bit going through the other side of the board, you want to stop, flip the board around, and then you want to drill the other side of the board. I'm going to line this, my drill bit, up to the hole. And that will give you a clean hole. One hole down. And just like that, you have completely clean holes. So I'm just gonna clean this entire top up with a little bit of sanding and we're basically all done. Just think, once you're done, you could also play whack-a-mole or that sandbag game, whatever people call it. Pork in the hole? <laughs> What's it called? Sandbag in the hole? I can't remember what it's called. Pork in the hole? That's definitely not what it's called, is it? Oh God. There it is. The final piece with the lid and the little planters are on the inside there. So you can all see. And then this sits on top. From ideation to creation. I don't know, it seems pretty bang on if I do say so myself. Yeah. This was a lot of work. Well, it wasn't hard work, it was just a lot of work. I'm glad I didn't decide to like build this in the morning and then be like, okay, then come over at 7.30 because it would have been a disaster. I'm gonna put a sealer on it tonight and then tomorrow night, I'm gonna put the entire dinner together. I can't wait to share it with you. So I will see you all tomorrow. Now that the box was created, my second day was certainly a busy one. Just getting my booties on. <laughs> You should come roll my sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Maxine rolls my sleeves for me. Professional sleeve roller. Yeah. Check my resume. I can roll pants too. <laughs> <laughs>had an amazing photo shoot for my new merch line which you guys all saw at the beginning of this video Jokes that actually happened today so I'm still covered I have like blue on me and I'm pretty sure I still have blue and purple on my face so anyways now I got to get all of the herbs into this bad boy it's like the most exciting part because this is when like the whole idea comes to life yeah yeah okay we're going in for the mint this shot is mint <laughs> After the shoot, I had a few friends behind the scenes helping out before they went home, but ultimately I had to get my herbs planted and the rest of my vision set up before my family members were going to arrive. That's so cool. Well, so thanks friends. So you all know my cement light pose. Well, it was finally time to see it in a new light. <laughs> get it. I was taking them apart so that I could move them over to my eating area. Did these things get heavier or is it just me? And I certainly forgot how heavy they were. <sighs> and the last part was to secure the lights back onto the post so that I could create the perfect ambience to my dinner party. Look how cute it looks already. I think we're done. See, another way to use these cute little cement beam lights. I'm not even sure what it's called. Cement beam lights. <laughs> Wooden beam posts. Cement beam light posts. Okay, well, whatever. Either way, this looks adorable. I can't wait for it to start to get dark. Now we need to dress the table. Yeah! The most mentionable items that really helped transform the table was this lovely ribbed table runner, the most adorable jute spiral placemats, these coral pink outdoor decorative plates, 
big recycled glass cups, some raspberry lemon water in an outdoor safe jug. Lemon and raspberries the best water. My beautiful flower arrangement in the most adorable ceramic jug. I mean, did I need more flowers? Obviously. I just loved this pitcher jug. It was so cute and speckled and I just love it. is ready. I need to go shower and get ready for the fam jam to come over and then it is time to get all this beautiful food on the table and then I can reveal to you what this looks like in the beautiful dusk of night. But I really need to get some of this blue and purple off my face. I will BRB and then we'll start setting this table. <laughs> so my dinner party ended up consisting of a delicious watermelon mint salad. The mint picked fresh of course. Bread for dipping olive oil and balsamic. Some meat and cheese selections. And of course, my pasta dish with sausage. Food's on the table. My family's gonna be here soon. I didn't wanna be on camera, so I have to respect that. So I hope you enjoy what this final table looks like when the sun comes down. And just like that, my backyard dining space was transformed into a beautiful dining experience that could really show off my wonderful DIY custom herb box centerpiece. It's such a great feeling to make a DIY piece that can be shared with friends and family like this. It was the perfect project to create conversation and add interaction to a dinner party. I even love the versatility of this herb box. You could fill it with flowers for decoration or stick baby's breath in it for a wedding or even put dinnerware in them. It is your imagination. The entire mood of this space was just lifted by these decorative lights that twinkled all around the table. Another superb way to use these DIY light posts to create magic in your yard. I love how all the little elements made this the dinner party of my dreams. Once we finally got to the dinner party, everybody loved the interaction. We were picking herbs off and it was just perfect. The whole night was just perfect. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found a little inspiration from all of my backyard DIY ideas. Let me know what you thought of this DIY project in the comment section below. What would you put in the box? Are you more of like the herb fan or would you want it more decorative with flowers? Let me know because I love to hear your twist on any projects that I create. And of course, do not forget to check out my new DIY clothing line. I have linked it in the description box. Please support. There's something there for everyone and I can say just wearing this sweater, it is so cozy. I love it all and I can't wait for you guys to try it too. I have just been so excited to share this line with you so I can't wait for your feedback. Let me know and uh, make sure you share it with me on social media. Hashtag DIY in progress, hashtag make it messy, hashtag let's get creative. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week. Bye bye.